Today, we're going to talk about hygienic zoning in food manufacturing plants in less than five hours. <laughs> Just kidding, less than 10 minutes. If you look up hygienic zoning as a definition in a book, it's going to say the process of setting up barriers to protect areas and product from environmental contamination. So there are a number of different things to keep those nasty pathogens out far from your finished product. So what does this process look like? And what are we looking for from you? Well first, you want to establish zones in your facility. You want to evaluate what those really dirty areas like the raw area and general areas going all the way from a transition zone to when you have ready to eat product. Then you want to make sure you control that foot traffic and wheel traffic. And then you want to control the airflow and control equipment and tools as well as what do you have for floor mitigation. So let's take a look at each one of these things in more detail. So what do we mean when we're talking about establishing zones or zoning concepts? Well, let's break it down. Because basically, you wouldn't want to make cheese or butter in a dirty bathroom, would you? Well, these steps and zones make that so that the bathroom is far away from your production area. And that would be a general or non-manufacturing area. Bathrooms, offices. You don't want to make product there. Then the next area, you've got raw products, which you're still de dealing with food, but it's unpasteurized and full of bacteria. Then you've got basic GMP areas, which GMP stands for Good Manufacturing Practices. And number four, you've got ready to eat areas where you're preparing ready to eat foods. And then the highest risk of getting contaminated is going to be your high hygiene areas and those need to be like the word says super clean high hygiene so you also have transition areas where you are um, changing different zones and you want to make sure you're washing your hands or maybe even changing out shoes now steps or zones one through five you're going from the dirtiest all the way to the cleanest areas so you don't want to be opening up a bathroom straight into a high hygiene area all right, let's do a visual representation of what this zoning looks like on an example floor plan of a plant. So let's start with the general non-manufacturing areas, right? You've got your visitor entrance, main locker room, employee entrance, maintenance, ingredient storage and offices, as well as sh your shipping and receiving dock. Now, when you wanna look at those transition areas, You'd want to make sure that you're washing your hands or switching out shoes, making sure you got the proper PPE on. Same goes for the raw areas like the raw locker room, raw milk storage, milk receiving. Those areas either directly deal with unpasteurized product or you are preparing to enter an area where that product is not pasteurized. Then you have ready to eat areas which you can be making cheese, you can do membrane processing, evaporation, waste storage, and separation. And that's where, again, you have an even higher risk of contamination of that product. Next, you have high hygiene areas, where it, there is no other steps after that to have a, a kill or a log reduction of pathogens. So if it gets contaminated there, there's no chance uh, at least in this factory of reducing the risk of contamination or eliminating pathogens. So best case scenario is you have operators that enter and follow the zones appropriately. And it's designed in a way that you, uh, you would enter the plant. There's a transition zone with, uh, with a hand washing sink. You would change out your shoes from outside to captive shoes. Then you go through a common GMP area and maybe enter another transition zone where you maybe apply more PPE or wash hands. And then you want to make sure you think about your wheel traffic. You wouldn't want to have your uh, forklift where you're unloading a bunch of trucks that have been all over the country going directly into open product areas. So having segregated wheels uh, just forklifts for the warehouse or forklifts for ready to eat or high hygiene areas 
is a great idea to prevent cross-contamination. And lastly, you want to best practice, make sure that you have a raw room individual or raw room operator where they are staying in that area and they're not going back and forth between a high risk of contamination area as well as an area that is known to be contaminated. And th think about this, there isn't a bathroom just built right in the middle of the plant, right? Because that has a lot of potential for germs and that is closer to where the locker rooms are and you have to go through some transition zones to remove some of those pathogens. But big picture, I know there's a lot of colors, but there are different modes, zones, and barriers you have to go through to get to a finished product area. You want to make sure that you aren't directly coming from outside and opening right into a production area because that would be a concern for cross-contamination. The second concept is controlling the traffic, specifically where are those people going? Where are those wheels going in your plant? As well as your ingredients. So number one, your visitors, where are they going? Where are they allowed to go? Um, your ready to eat room operators and raw room operators. You don't want your raw room operator going back and forth and messing with finished product because you're gonna have a bad day when you have some contamination. And think of maintenance as well. Everyone should have captive shoes that don't leave the plant and even specifically think of your uniforms Those shouldn't leave the plant either and even best practice is if you are a raw room operator using specific Uniforms for that particular room Then think of the wheels you maybe have forklifts pallet jacks or other carts you want to make sure that those aren't being a cross-contamination source either because you know if you're unloading a truck that's been who knows where let's be honest you wouldn't eat any food off of a trailer floor there have been wheels dirt and all sorts of things that have marched over there although it might be visually clean you don't want to be dragging that inside of your high hygiene area that eventually could end up in the product and then lastly where are your ingredients? You don't want to have your uh, raw ingredients being stored um, in the same room as your um, high hygiene or ready to eat areas. You want to make sure if they are pre-pasteurization, they are being handled accordingly. All right, concept three, where's the airflow going? So we already talked about things going from dirtiest to cleanest where you've got your general manufacturing raw ready to eat then high hygiene well your airflow should be going the exact opposite you want your air going from clean all the way to dirtiest because if you got your raw room air and which could have pathogens in there in the air you don't want that going outside of that room so you want the air pressure going to the room not out because eventually that's going to get your finished product and contaminate it all right concept four controlling your equipment and tools now if you have your raw room and you have a finished product tool stored in there there could be a chance of contamination and then you bring it out your shoveling curd and what do you know it's contaminated or say you have your maintenance shop and you have a nice wrench but you aren't going through the proper transition zone and cleaning it properly, that could be a source of contamination as well. Lastly, what is floor mitigation? Well, maybe you have all the proper zones. You've got your locker room that goes into a transition area where you've got a bench and you've got a bunch of shoes, captive shoes there, um, and you're not taking your outside shoes in the plant. Well, when you are about to go into the plant, sanitizing those shoes is crucial so you could do that by using a foot foamer foot sanitizer beads or a foot bath to recap hygienic zoning is all about being intentional about knowing where your most dirty areas are and separating them from where you actually make product whether it's thinking about barriers between those dirty and clean cleaner areas as well as how your air is flowing from cleaner to dirty areas as well as how are you sanitizing your shoes what people are working in what areas as well as 
what you're doing with your tools, as well as wheel traffic around your plant. Thanks for watching.